felt like an idiot. I felt like a complete idiot. How could I be so sure he loved me that I went ahead and risked it all for this? I remember how apprehensive I was when I sent my resignation to my former firm. I didn't know what or how to feel. It's bad enough that he yelled at me. It's even worse that he was now driving me to some place that wasn't all that familiar. I think we were in Tribeca when I noticed the look on his face was no longer that of anger, but pain. And was that sadness? He parked his car by a white duplex and turned to look at me, his eyes not quite meeting mine. Babe, I'm really sorry for how he spoke and acted earlier. I shouldn't have. I know I shouldn't have. I'm really sorry, V. He said and looked down, guilt evident on his handsome face. His dark eyes appeared to glitter, and I couldn't quite tell if it was light reflections or there were actual tears in there. Hey, sweetie. You've been tightly strung for a while now. Do you think I wouldn't notice? Come here, babe. You could always talk to me about anything. His lips quivered as he tried to speak, and I don't think I had seen him that vulnerable before. He seemed so burdened. It broke me to see him like that. When he spoke, his voice was unbelievably steady. Steady, but full of emotion. I could tell he had been hurting a long, long time and all I wanted to do was take it all away. He mentioned his parents' death, and I could not quite bring myself to hear any more. I smothered the remaining words of the kiss and watched him return my gesture with even greater fervor. I could not solve his problems, but I could at least help him feel better in the meantime. My hands left the sides of his head to find his belt's buckle. I should take the pain away. That's basically what a good little would do. In a few seconds, I had my mouth encircling his thick shaft in a tight embrace while guiding his hand to the back of my head. I loved it when he emphasized that he was in control of not just me or my body, but his feelings and pleasures also.